the last things that you said was really great about um, so low key about the cool stuff that one does. So I'm an ashram doctor and I've been in practice here for 12 years. And I've done some really cool stuff and I've done it really, really well. One of them, one of my issues or my things about not being confident enough in that messaging is I've seen some new grads come in and they've got these kick ass websites and they say, I did this and I did this really well. Jeez, I've been doing that for a decade and, and I haven't put it out there. And um, this other, these other, at least some other doctors, and they'll be really confident in saying, I do this really cool stuff. And I'm like, I've been doing that for a decade. And so I'm needing to figure out how to step into that and own that. Do what the new grads are doing. Right, so I, I but I have a, not flashiness, I'm like, I'm like, oh, that's why you brag, I have a problem with the bragging. But listen to your response to it. Yeah, right? that's, what I, that's, what, that's what I said, you really spoke to me in that, like I need to step up and say, I can do this. You do, and, and you want to do it to the degree that you're comfortable with. So not everyone's going to be flash. Some people are still going to be subdued, uh, supple. I don't understand the word, but she the pow pow. Sorry, I, I, I but but um, to the degree that you're comfortable, and you are kind of comfortable with what the new grads are doing because you responded enough to remember to talk about it here in public in a room full of people. So it's obviously made an impact on you, and to me, I would follow that path lighting up a little bit, and do your version, work with somebody who knows you and gets you, but do your version of that. The trouble with these, I just turned 50 in August, so I can say this, kids these days. <laughs> <laughs> you know that entitlement and all that, blah, blah, blah. Well, those buggers are tuned in, tapped in, turned on to how it really works. Isn't that annoying? <laughs> You know, someone like me is taking decades to figure this shit out. You know I mean? And then I, and I kept firing these 20 something assistants that have because they're so annoying, come in with their little Starbucks and just you know, and, 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 and entitled. And I, I, I don't mean that in a negative way, I mean it in a positive way. Entitled. You are entitled. You were entitled. And yet we struggle to get into that place of entitlement. Entitlement is not about work. You were entitled to be who you really are in its fullest expression. The interesting thing is I'm the, I'm the president of the Ontario Association of Naturopathic Doctors, so I'm the leader for all of this. And you need a website. <laughs> <laughs> so I just have to figure out how to tell the story, but thank you. Absolutely. Our picture on Instagram yesterday was my most popular post. Well, I am a super fan of his, so to see him in person is great. Uh, my name is Rebecca, and I'm a high performance mental trainer for figure skaters. And I am building a personal brand. So my face is all over my branding. Um, Catherine Priestman is my marketing guru, and she told me to put, you know, a huge, like, 10 foot picture of me as a backdrop for my booth. And so I listened to her. And uh, at first it was hard to get used to that, but I'd like to know um, how you sort of navigate building your personal brand. Like, how do you make the decisions that you make? Is it gut feeling? Is it what fits you? I'm, I'm almost always gut feeling, yeah. and I'll go with what scares me a little bit more because you want to be on the roller coaster ride. You didn't come to just stand in line waiting for it. You want the ups and downs, you want the thrill. Someone talked about getting comfortable, uncomfortable in your comfort. Who said that? Yeah. You said that. Um, that's a great place to be, I think. I never want to be comfortable. I don't want a feathered nest. I don't want it cushy. I don't want it done. I don't want it all sorted. I want to be out on the raw and ragged edge and really be excited about getting on a roller coaster. You know, we, we have people these days that talk a lot about their anxiety and stuff, and while it is a, a, a medical problem for some, some people get really, really bummed up when it's sort of like, you're just living life. Life is exciting. And when you know that life always works out for you, and because we're all here, it has, you are your own evidence, you are your own proof that you have survived everything you have survived in written two books, Right? You are your proof. 
Because of that, you don't have to be worried. You're not worried when you're on the roller coaster. You just assume it's all good. Except for those unfortunate few people that you hear about. But, <laughs> but you assume it's all good. 99.9% .9 of the time it is. You arrive back and you're on the next ride. And so I do the things that scare me a little bit to that degree. Because I'm not that worried. My, my, I, I uh, have a roommate these days. And uh, it's fun because he's 20 years younger than me. Not nearly as attractive. <laughs> and he's always like, so I, I'm going to Chicago next weekend, I think. But I'm leaving from Chicago after that for Guadalajara. And he's like, Chicago's not settled yet. I said, no, but Guadalajara needed to know where I was leaving from. So I, I said Chicago because I know I'll end up in Chicago. He said, but your schedule's not going to work out that way. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. And, and so I'll even plan life with a little bit of that kind of warped risk in there. Because that's when you're saying to life, bring it on. And so it does. The universe has your back. And it will move mountains and do whatever it's got to do in your favor. Sometimes we don't think it's in our favor. Uh, the divorce, uh, the problems with finances, uh, that bugger at work. We don't think it's in our favor, but in 2010, uh, along with three other co-hosts on a radio station called Proud FM in Toronto, I was the afternoon drive host. We all got fired. Something I did. But, <laughs> but um, everyone was like, oh my god, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And I loved my show. I loved my show. And, but I also had the magazine I published, speaking, other projects. Uh, I soon got a TV show with a, a place called OTV. But people were saying, what an awful thing to have happen. And I wasn't so sure about that, even though I loved my show. And then when I got the Oprah Winfrey interview, it all made sense. Now, losing my show it wasn't as, as easy breezy as I just described it. But it made a lot of sense when I ended up at Sirius XM, which is an international brand, that she had a channel on that she knew because she wasn't going to go, go to Proud FM in Toronto, 30 watts, or whatever it was, <laughs> you know what I mean? Go on the 401, you can't hear it anymore. Um, <laughs> Oprah! But what, one of the things that made it easy for her was just Sirius XM. And so while it took a couple of years of me banging on the door to get a show at SiriusXM, and this wasn't a strategy, I just saw that they had a new channel called Canada Talks. And I looked at the lineup and I thought, there's no gay man here. <laughs> I'm playing the gay card a little bit, sorry. Um, but it's not really a gay show, it's just a guy like me hosting it. But um, that, when that happened, when it lined up, when my dream came true, I understood even the most painful things like losing your job are cooperative components. Everything's taking you to where you desire. And you can go uh, with the flow, or you can find it. Mm. You can find it. Next question. I feel like a little imp from Laura Tucker. A little monkey. I have a practical advice question. I have a literary agent. I am writing a book about the story I shared yesterday, and she's asking me to find endorsements from famous people like Laura and Oprah <laughs> that you've interviewed. Laura, How do I approach uh, people <laughs> to endorse my book? I haven't done that, but if I were you, I would consider my network, and I would consider who they know, and then I would ask them to get the book into the hands of the people that have influence that you want. I would be sending it with to every you know, media person who has influence. Send it to me. You're, you're the mother with the trans son. Send that to me. Um, and, and, and I wouldn't just do it in an envelope. I would do it in a way that they notice the damn thing. Whether it's going to be delivered with balloons or whatever, Make them notice your package and set the game in. Je ne parle pas ça either. That's what I would do. And I've, I see that all the time. Um, 
you know, I, I was reading someone's opening is, I know so-and-so who knows the author, and they pass this on to me, and I thought, oh, I don't want to do this, but then I read it, and onwards it goes. So, so I would do that, and I, I thought Lisa Larder did an amazing job at collecting endorsements from her book, so I would go to uh, Lisa, too. For everything, for everything, really. Go to Lisa. <laughs> Next question. I have no idea what time it is. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Um, I just want to thank you. Um, you got this. Thank you. Um, I just want to thank you for being authentically you. Uh, I hid who I was most of my life. I was cancer. <clears throat> But uh, quiet, sensitive, timid, brave. And I just, you know, you need to be stronger, you need to be braver, don't be so wishy washy. And I did that most of my life. And just within the last year, somebody saw something in me that gave me the confidence to step into that. And it's changed how I see myself, it's changed how people interact with me. It's, it's been and are you now the person who sees the, the spark in you? I'm starting. Good. <laughs> uh, and I, I wanted to, you said, uh, I'm terrified. What's your name? Nancy. Nancy, you're Nancy, you're not terrified. <laughs> Nancy. I, I, I catch people uh, when, 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 when I do one on one coaching stuff uh, with them. They own their stuff. My fat ass, my divorce my cancer, my crappy boss. Stop attaching yourselves, especially to the things you don't want. It's not your cancer, it's an experience. It is separate from you, right? So I, I wonder what you're doing now to get to the point where you feel that it's you who sees the spark in you and not someone else. Can you share that? It was there all along. Yeah, yeah it was there all along. You, you know, um, I, I talked about the journaling thing. Take the journaling exercise and write a list of positive aspects about yourself every day. Trust me, I do. But but that, like, I really I really go the extra mile. Like, but when you come from where you and I came from, you got to go the extra mile, and you've got to be truthful about it. I'm sexy. I'm writing that down this morning. Do you know what I mean? You you got to write down who you really are. And sometimes when I'm telling the story, I love this, what, this comments and question you've shared with us because it really is about telling your story. You know, you said you spent time uh, timid, shy, not thinking, well, why was that, do you think, in your reflections? I'm starting to see now, I just, I think I absorb so much that it was overwhelming to really For a time, well, the, the, the trouble with that for, for anybody is that in the end, you're playing small doesn't save the world. Marion believes it. It does nothing. You know, you're a light and you should shine. And I'm having problems with my mother these days uh, with our relationship because I have two younger brothers and they're nice guys, uh, good-looking guys, successful guys. Um, but I'm the black sheep of the family. I'm the blah, 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 all the time. But that's who I am. And my mother keeps, in different ways, uh, it's very hurtful. She doesn't say, look at this guy I raised who shines a little bit brighter. How amazing is this? Dim your light, dim your light, dim your light. If I make a joke within a minute of being on the phone with her, I'm making a joke. I'm, I'm being open-hearted with you. Shut down. Oh, Sean, just stop it. It's like, and it's painful to go through that. But in the end, and I love my mother very much, but she's not enough of a justification for me to dim my light. I have no value. 
and, and <clears throat> the thought in my mother yesterday at one point when I was on stage speaking to you guys, because and probably again today, because I talked about my, my rougher upbringing, well, that woman was a rock and had an alcoholic father and was dependent, husband rather, and was dependent on him for, for her income. And we lived in, you know, rural Ontario on a 150 acre farm with one car, which he had all the time, when she was literally stranded with three boys. <clears throat> and then he died and left her with three boys and no money. That woman's a rock. But, so it's difficult for me though to say I had a difficult upbringing because I worry about what my mother will think. But I can't even worry about what my mother will think because otherwise I don't give you perspective and context around my story so that you get a vibe where you go, I'm going to tell my story better than I have been doing because Sean told his and look how far he came. If I don't give you a start place that's my story, then there's no point in telling my story. And you have to take the bits of your story that maybe someone else doesn't want you to tell and own it because it's your story, your perspective. There's nobody else in the world who has your eyes. And I don't mean those pretty blue things, I mean the perspective that you have on life through the circumstances you've experienced, through the upbringing you've had, through perhaps culture, country, religion, race. Everyone has a unique perspective and no one should tell you to not tell your story as boldly and beautifully as you know how. How many more uh, questions do we have time for? Does anybody know? We've got uh, 14. You have four minutes, so <laughs> okay. if there's one more question, I will let one more slide in. One more. I don't know. I don't, it doesn't have to be right. a asked question. So someone who hasn't asked a question. Uh, the good news is we're going to break and you ask Sean questions all day long. <laughs> business and I went to expand into my next business which was training um, and business coaching which is kind of what we all gravitate to when we need that ourselves um, you know because I was very good at helping others um, tell us how I, amazing your life is right now pardon me tell us how amazing your life is right now I have an amazing life I have two amazing kids I have a great husband we have a beautiful home we have money, I have amazing friends. It's amazing. I didn't want to cut off your question, I'd still like to hear it, but yeah. there's little value of looking back over your shoulder when you're storytelling yeah. and talking about, you're describing yourself, yeah. I want to hear your question, but we're hearing about. But the question is, you almost, I have like the guilt of like, why do I have anxiety? Why do I have mental issues? when I had all the advantages. It's like the opposite of, like, I didn't have to go through this. I didn't have to do that. And because I still suffer. Because you have to grow. What causes you to grow is contrast, experience, what we call negativity, what, what is really a blessing. 
you had to grow, and you had the really unfortunate experience of having a nice childhood. I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. It's the slower route. It's the slower route. You, I, I said this uh, to um, a girlfriend of mine, and we were talking about it. I said the worst thing that can happen to a child is nothing. That's the worst. We, we parents try to feather the nest and keep them all guarded and stay away from drugs and that awful boyfriend and da da da. You want them out. You want them tripping. You want them falling. You want a drug addiction. You want all this crazy stuff. You want a pregnancy. You want an abortion. You want all this stuff. You do. You do. You want the alcoholic father. You want the, the father who dies in front of you when you're 17. You want all that stuff. You want to be bullied. Because by the time I got, you do, because by the time I got to where I was going to kick off my life, my way, I was resourceful, resilient, smart, nimble, I could get the job done. Because I had been trained by the very best, <laughs> my goddamn father, I have a very nice relationship with him now. Uh, but I had He's <laughs> dead. <laughs> I do. If you go to my blog, if you all signed up for my newsletter, if you go to my blog, you're going to see a post called How I Learned There Is No Death. You'll knock your socks off. But did you get the... So now, my turning point was when my web designer wanted to put my picture on the new website. And I took some pictures, and then I was like, there's no way that's going on the website. And Why? Because I, that wasn't the image that I wanted to portray. I ended up getting like weight loss surgery done. So down and over her pounds, which is amazing. Did you but do it for yourself or did you I, do it for No, no, I did it for myself. Yeah. Absolutely. My business has prospered because I felt better about it. So yeah. I'm looking forward to headshots. And, <laughs> and, and uh, you know, and that is the next step. And because of it, though, because I felt better about it, um, you know, everything is better. So that was always like, the, the part of my life that I needed to work on. And it had to get worse before it got better. But, uh, you know, the, I, I guess it comes back to like the, it's almost like a survivor feels. It's like you feel like bad because. No, stop, I, stop, stop that thing you I, do. Stop, and I know I'm simplifying. But you're thinking thoughts of survivor's guilt. And you can, small thought by small thought, because you got yourself in there, small thought by small thought, get yourself out, and start telling your story a little bit differently. It's going to be too much to say, I have no survivor's guilt anymore, I got rid of it. That's not your story. But you can say, and this is also something that the uh, tool that I have on shampoo.ca, I use this all the time, 10 times a day. I like the idea of no more survivor's guilt. Because it's a very fair, true statement. I like the idea of whatever. It's very fair and true, and it's just a small shift. And when you start to say that, you start to manifest physical evidence that matches. I'm not experiencing as much survivor's guilt as I did once, and you continue on. That's your new story. My survivor's guilt is dissipating, disappearing, going. Hi. Hi, oh. I know that you could stand up here and talk all day long. <laughs> but I am the time police. <laughs> and I let you start early. Oh, you did. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> a couple minutes, so that Derek had a little extra time. So, you, my dear, who have, like, frame things in the most positive way, also have speaker disease. I have speaker disease, too. What's that? I can't own it. Like, I know I shouldn't say it. Is there a cure? It means that you can, you give this person a mic and you can't shut them up, right? <laughs> So, um, there's a few things that I would like to say before we break. I want to give you one last minute to wrap up, and then we're going to, you know, say a, a very huge thank you to you for your contribution. But I'm going to let you have a moment. A moment. Let's have a moment, everyone. <laughs> this is a moment. Uh, I want to end on shoes. Can you guys see my shoes? They're only Lisa Larder, I think. Yes, yeah. love the ring right folks. Yeah. I've had them forever. Okay. <laughs> They're kind of riding boots. They're a Canadian designer. I got them in town shoes years and years and years ago. And I have size 12 feet. And for a long time, it was very difficult for me to find shoes that fit and that I liked. And so that was my story of shoes. And we all know how important shoes are. Um, and then 
one day, I stopped myself and I started to say, I like the idea of finding better shoes that fit me. I like the idea of lots of size 12s to choose from instead of one pair that town shoes had. And so, these boots got me 10 free pairs of shoes because I was wearing them at some function and the marketing VP of town shoes, it was a cocktail pair, she was like, <laughs> She's like, what's going on? These are amazing. You wear them so well. I'm like, well, it's my Naomi Campbell legs. <laughs> and she's like, do you need a shoe sponsorship? I said, I do. <laughs> and so she arranged me for me to go in and get to, because I told my story differently. Now I have hundreds of shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Tell the story the way you want it to be. fabulous, positive way of living life with all of us. I think that uh, there's lots and lots to glean from what Sean has said. So, a couple things.